Hello everyone! In this video tutorial, we'll be learning how to create our own competitor sprites. So there are two parts to this video tutorial. The first part will teach you how to create a second player sprite and the next part of the video will teach you how to create an enemy sprite from scratch. Okay, so let's begin. Now, to make a very simple player 2 sprite, all you need to do is to duplicate the existing player sprite that you already have. So I'm just going to do a simpler duplicate here. Okay, and then Scratch will automatically rename your duplicated sprite as player 2. Alright, so I'm not going to change the name, I'm going to leave it as such. Now, you will notice that since we have duplicated player sprite to make a player 2 sprite, player 2 sprite looks exactly the same like our player sprite here. So I'm going to vary the look a bit by using one very simple block code. Okay, under your looks panel, under the code tab, you will be able to look and find a change color or set color effect code. Okay, we are going to pull out a set color effect code just to change the color look of player 2 so it stands out from the player sprite. Okay, so I'm going to just pull out this set color block. I'm going to pop it to the very first set of code. When green flag click, set size to 30, and then I'm going to pop the color block just under it before the forever. Okay, now I'm going to show you what happens if I were to change the number under the set color effect block. Okay, if I were to set a random number here, and if I press the green flag to launch the game, what you notice is that the color effect will give you to three color sprites. Okay, and just with a simple code like this, you are able to change the entire look of your sprite. Okay, so very simple. You don't actually need to go to costumes editor to recolor your sprite. That's another way, but you can also use this simple code color block just to change the entire color. Okay, now let's look at the controls for our second player sprite. It follows the exact same controls as our first player sprite, and that is not what we want because a second player sprite will need to have its own set of different controls so that someone else can play the game with or against you. Okay, so we're going to just switch and substitute some of these uh, arrow con uh, key conventions to launch the up, down, left, right movements. Now, in most video games, other than the up, down, left, right arrow, there's also a very common uh, letters, keys that video games like to use to control movement. So they are W, A, S, and D. W being on top will represent the up movement. A, which is on the left side, will represent the left movement. S, which is on the down side, will represent the down movement. And D, which is on the right side, will represent the right movement. Okay, so let's just substitute our arrow code blocks with that. Alright, so for up movement, for player 2, we're going to switch it to the W key. For down movement, we're going to switch it to the S key. For the right movement, we'll switch it to the D key. Okay, and then for the left movement, we're going to switch it to the A key to control. Okay, now let's test this out. I'm going to test the sprites one by one. Okay, so first, my player 1 sprite, up, down, left, right, and Okay, player 2 sprite, W, up, S, down, A, F, D, right. Okay, great. So it works. All right. So now that we have finished learning how to create a very simple player 2 sprite, we're going to move on to learn how to create an enemy sprite or an automated sprite that can play with or against you. Okay, so I actually have a current template for it already. So I'm just going to upload the existing template I have. You can also choose to create your enemy sprite or your automated sprite from scratch. Okay, so there it is. I have a template of an enemy sprite that I want here. I'm going to automate this sprite to make it move randomly around the whole screen on its own. So for this sprite, it's not going to be controlled by anyone. Okay, so to do this, I'm going to start with some basic code first, just to get the sizing right. So when green flag is click, I'm going to just set the size. Okay, and then I'm going to create some animation for this because for my enemy sprite, I, have also, I also have a costume change effect so that it looks more realistic like it's hovering in space. Okay. All 
All right, let me just show you how this looks like. Okay, so now it looks like it's basically opening its face. Okay, now for the automated movement code, this is very simple. When green flag is click, control forever, we're going to go to motion. Under motion, there's actually a block, two blocks in fact, that allow you to glide your sprites to a random position. Okay, I'll go to a random position. So I'm going to use this block just to show you how it works. Glide one second to a random position. I'm just going to add a little waiting time before it moves to the next spot. Okay, now let's try this. There we go. So just with a simple code like this, you're able to make a sprite to move on its own way. Okay, now I'm just going to add a bit of precautionary code. I don't want my enemy sprite to move on its own and get stuck at the edges of the game. So this is what I'm going to do. When green flag is click, control forever. Under motion, I don't want it to rotate in other directions. I want to fix its rotation style. So set rotation style to don't rotate. And Eve on the edge of the game screen, bounce off. Okay, so let's try this out again. And there we go. Okay, so just like that, you are able to create your own automated sprite with simple coding such that you don't have to control so many sprites at once. Okay, so this is a very simple way to introduce some element of competition into your game. Alright, so have fun with your code, see what else you can do and experiment.